Hello everyone. I want you to meet another of my story friends today. He's under this blue cloth here. He thinks he's under the water. That's where he usually lives. So, one, two, three. Ta-da! Meet Froggy. Now, Froggy lives in a pond. Frogs do that. They can actually spend all winter at the bottom of the pond, sleeping not under a comfortable duvet, but uh, in the mud at the bottom of a pond. I don't think I'd like to spend even a night sleeping at the bottom of a pond, especially if I had to wrap myself up in mud. But Froggy, he can do that all winter, but he's just woken up, haven't you, Froggy? Oh, I know, you're still a bit sleepy. Um, I think we could share a story. Do you think so? Story about your pond and what happened to you? Yep, I think that's a good idea. I better tell you about Froggy's pond. It's a lovely blue, clean pond. Around the outside, there are tall trees with new leaves this time of year. And there are uh, red flowers, green flowers, yellow flowers, lots of yellow flowers. And there's grey stones all around the pool. If you go down into the water, there are little orange fish that dive and duck around in the water. And there's lots of weaving wavy water weed. And, but what Froggy likes really best is when he can come out of the water and look under the grey stones that are all around his pond. Because there are big, fat, juicy slugs. Yum, 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 yum. And that's what frogs like best. Frogs are really clever because although they can spend their time in the water, they can also come out on the land and I couldn't do that. I can stay out here on the land, but I can't go down into the water. No, I can't stay under water like you. Well, let's start your story. One day, not so long ago, Froggy was sitting at the bottom of his pond, just having a rest. Do, 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 do. And all of a sudden, something suddenly, get this, something fell on his head. Boom! Ow! said Froggy. Well, he looked at the thing that had fallen out of the sky and into the water of the pond, and seeing it was a beautiful gold colour, he thought it must be some sort of new fish. Good, he thought. I'll talk to it. Hello! Hello! said Froggy. He loved to talk to the other fish. But the little round golden thing didn't say a word. So Froggy, Froggy decided he would take no notice at all and just ignore it. Ha! Then he thought, if it's not a golden fish and I can't talk to it, maybe it's a new sort of slug. <gasps> a golden slug! Maybe I'll take a bite out of it. <clears throat> Ow! But since he couldn't eat it and he couldn't talk to it, he ignored it. A little while later, while he was sitting at the bottom of the water, all of a sudden he heard something... In fact, he heard his favourite noise. It was a sort of plop, 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 plop sound. It's raining, it's raining, said Froggy. And he went up to the top of the pond. You see, frogs love rain because it's when it's raining that the fattest, juiciest, juiciest slugs come out from underneath the stones. And Froggy goes out to grab them. Uh, but it wasn't raining. The sun was shining in a perfectly blue sky. But right next to the pond was a little girl. And she was crying. And her tears were falling in the pond. Froggy looked at the girl in surprise. Hello, he said. Is it you that's raining? I'm not raining, said the little girl. I'm crying. <laughs> well, why are you crying, said Froggy. Well, said the little girl, whose name was Princess Anna, but Froggy didn't know that. Anna said to him, I'm crying because it's my birthday. Your birthday, said Froggy. People don't cry when it's their birthday. And then Princess Anna said, But I'm crying because I had lots of presents. Lots of presents, said Froggy. Nobody cries because they get lots of presents. I'm crying, said Princess Anna again, because I really like my presents. Ha, said Froggy, that's nothing to cry for. And Princess Anna said, But I'm crying. Because my favourite present was a golden ball. Well, that's nothing to cry for, said Froggy. Sounds like a perfectly good present for, to me. It was, said the princess. And she explained that she loved her golden ball, that she'd taken it out into the garden. She'd gone down quite near the pond and she was throwing it up into the air and catching it when she missed. And it had fallen, plop, right into the pond and sunk to the bottom. And now she couldn't get it. Oh, said Fro Froggy. Then it wasn't a golden slug and it wasn't a new type of fish. I know what it was. And he went down and he grabbed the ball and he took it up to the surface and he gave it to the princess. Princess Anna took it and she went, Froggy, that's my golden ball. Thank you so much. 
but she didn't throw it up into the air again. She put it in her pocket. And then she said, Froggy, since it's my birthday today, would you like to come to my party? Oh, yes, please, said Froggy. And then Princess Anna went back to the castle and left Froggy all by himself. I'm going to a party, I'm going to a party, said Froggy. Uh, but then he thought, hmm, I'd better take the princess a birthday present. Now, it's hard to think of a birthday present for a princess. It's hard to think what you can find for a princess. No, she's already got a little golden throat, a crown. She doesn't need another one. And anyway, would you know where to get her a crown? A new princess dress. Do you have any at the bottom of a pond? Oh dear, it's difficult to think of what to buy for a princess. Um, what have you got, Froggy? No, I don't think she's going to want some weavy wavy water weed. Oh, I see. You could try giving her something you think you'd like. And then Froggy had a great idea. I know what I'd like best, said Froggy. If it were my birthday, I'd want fat, juicy slugs. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, so he went and collected some slugs and from under the stones around the pond and he put them in a bag and off he went to the palace. And when he got to the palace, he knocked on the door and the princess answered the door. I've come to your party, said Frock very politely, and I've brought you a present. And he handed the princess a big bag of slimy, wriggly, juicy, live slugs. And the princess took them and she tried to be very polite and say, Thank you very much, Froggy. Just what I wanted, because she was a very polite princess. And then it was time for the princess's party. Well, they played some games. Uh, what's your favourite game? Hide, hide the, hide the thimble, or um, hide the thimble, or hide and seek, or maybe pass the parcel. Yes, I suppose you could. Froggy taught them a new game, and the game he taught the princess and all the children was called Jump Frog. And maybe you could play it too. Now. Hold out your hands, just in front of you like that. I've got to hold Froggy, but you can hold out both hands. Now, if you're going to make your hands do a little jump, it might look like this. But if you're going to make your hands do a big jump, it might look like this. Now, you've got to watch Froggy very, very carefully. And when he's finished, you can try copying him. So are you ready to teach frog jump? OK, so watch Froggy. Little jump, little jump, big jump, big jump. Oh, I think I could copy that. Can you? Little jump, little jump, big jump, big jump. I think that was a bit easy. Can you try a more difficult one? Are you watching carefully? Little jump, big jump, little jump, little jump, big jump. Oh, can I remember that one? Little jump, big jump, little jump, little jump, big jump. That's a good game. I'm sure the children could play that for themselves. Yeah, it is a good game. I'm sure you could get some more complicated patterns to try out for your, your brothers and sisters, or even your mum and dad if they want to play Jump Frog. But then it was time for tea. Now, a birthday tea is something special. I'm sure there are things that you would like for your birthday tea. Perhaps chicken nuggets? They're popular. Froggy, would you like to try a chicken nugget? <laughs> said Froggy. I don't like chicken nuggets. The princess tried something else. How about a piece of pizza? Try a piece of pizza. <laughs> said Froggy. I don't like pizza. Oh dear, said the princess, who was finding it more difficult to be polite now. Would you like um, a donut? And she handed Froggy a donut. <laughs> said Froggy. I don't like donuts. Princess was beginning to get a little bit annoyed now. Well, maybe you should try some ice cream, she said. So she gave Froggy some ice cream. I don't like ice cream. Oh dear, thought the princess. Well, you could try some of my special chocolate princess birthday cake. It's absolutely delicious. So Froggy tried a piece of extra chocolate princess birthday cake. <laughs> said Froggy. I don't like birthday cake. Well, what do you like, said, said the princess. Is it anything you'll eat? And Froggy says, oh yes, 
I like big fat juicy slugs. Yum, 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 yum. So the princess remembered her birthday present and she put all the wiggly, juicy, slimy slugs on a plate and she bought them to Froggy and he went, yum, 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 yum. Thank you, present. But thank you, princess. It's exactly what I like. Well, after the party, it was time for the children to go home. And uh, just before, all the children went home, but just before Froggy left, he said to the princess, um, princess, um, I'm a bit tired, you see, I've only got little legs and it was a long way to hop to the palace, a long way to the castle. Uh, do you think I could stay here tonight and I'll go and hop home in the morning? And the princess, who was a very polite princess, said, of course you can stay, Froggy, we'd love to have you stay for the night. Uh, princess, said Froggy. Can I stay in your room? Princess saw a frog in my room, but she was a polite princess, so she said, Of course, Froggy, you can stay in my room. You have got a, sh you have got a, a pond in your room, haven't you? said Froggy. A pond in my room, said the princess. No, I haven't got a pond in my room. Ooh, said Froggy. I thought everybody had ponds in their rooms. Uh, well, they settled on the fact that princess being princess had a shower in her room and so they thought if they put some water into the shower tray that would suit froggy and froggy decided that that was a lovely pond for the night and so they settled down the princess in her princess bed and the frog fro frog in his shower bed and they settled down for the night but just before they went to sleep froggy stuck his head out of the shower and said princess 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 wake up princess you must make me a promise <gasps> all right said the sleepy princess you must promise never, ever, ever, ever to kiss me. Yeah, because I heard a story where a prince, a frog turned into a prince when a princess kissed him. And I don't want to be a frog. I don't want to be a prince. I want to stay a frog because I like being a frog. Well, the princess didn't find that very difficult. She promised not to kiss the frog because that's not a hard promise to keep, is it? Most people don't go around kissing frogs. And so they settled down for us to sleep and in the morning Froggy said thank you very much for having me to stay overnight princess and he went back to his pond but before he went back he said to the princess princess you must come and visit me at the bottom of my pond and the princess said thank you frog that would be lovely but I don't know how she's going to do it you see Frogs, like you, you're amphibian. That means that you can live underwater and you can live on the land, on the dry land as well. But princesses aren't amphibian. They can't breathe underwater. I can't and I'm sure you can't either. None of us can. So I'm not sure how she's going to go to tea with the frog. But he insists that she will and that one day she'll come for a slice of slug cake and a piece of snail and a cup of snail tea and they'll have a party at the bottom of the pond. Now I wonder how she's going to manage it. It would make a good story, wouldn't it, Froggy? It would make a good picture as well. So maybe I can send you, I can uh, leave you some sheets which will help you make a story about how the princess went for, a, for to tea at the bottom of the pond with the frog. What's that? Oh, he's still yawning. He's still a bit sleepy. Are you going to go back to sleep at the bottom of the pond? Just for the night. So bye-bye, everybody. He's going to go and I'll put him back here so we can have a little rest now. We'll put him back here. And you have a rest. That's it. Put you back there. Oh. Don't go away because I've got another of my friends I want you to meet. Now my friend here is an animal. He's in this bag, but he's not a frog. In my bag, I've got a big, strong animal. No, it's not an elephant. It's not a bear. It's not even a gorilla. I better give you another clue. In my bag, I've got a big, strong animal with teeth and claws and a tail. I suppose it can't be a gorilla because gorillas don't have, don't have tails. I suppose it could be an elephant or a lion. I'll give you another clue. In my bag, I've got a big strong animal with teeth and claws and a tail. And he's red. Hmm. I don't think lions are red and I've never seen a red elephant. I'll give you another clue. 
in my bag. I've got a big strong animal with teeth and claws and a tail and he's red and he's got scales. Scales like a crocodile or a snake. But snakes don't have teeth and claws and a tail. Well, I suppose snakes have tails but they don't have teeth and claws. And an elephant or a lion has, doesn't have scales. I'm not sure what it can be. Have you got an idea yet? I'll give you another clue. In my bag, I've got a big, strong animal with teeth and claws and a tail. And he's red. And he's got scales. And he's got wings. Well, what could that be? It can't be a snake and it can't be even a dinosaur. Or could it? I don't know. I'll give you another clue. I bet you'll guess it from the last clue. In my bag, I've got a big, strong animal with teeth and claws and a tail. And he's red and he's got scales and he's got wings. And sometimes, just sometimes, he breathes fire. Yes, you've all got it now because in my bag, I've got a dragon. Well, he's not really big or fierce or strong. He's only a little dragon. And also, he's very, very shy. Now, I don't think he's seen the camera before, so I think I'm going to have to persuade him to come out of the bag. Oh, by the way, his name is Chubby. Chubby, come on, come on, Chubby. It's OK. Come on, out you come. Come on. Oh, let's turn the bag. Come on, Chubby, out you come. Don't worry, it's quite safe. It's quite safe. Come on, out you come. Nobody's going to shout at you or anything else like that. Here he is. Oh, here he is. Oh, Chubby. Oh, don't worry. When dragons show their teeth, they're just smiling. I know. Isn't it strange that, you know, that, oh, you've got magic eyes, just like Jean, like Sparky the genie, have you? There are a lot of children on the other side of the camera. Oh, that's good. Look, I'll tell you what. Come out then. You don't have to be shy. In that case, get your wonderful claws out. Oh, look at your golden. No, you don't have to bite your claws. No, you don't have to be nervous. Let's get you right out of the bag. Then the children will be able to see your wonderful wings. Come on, get your red and black wings out. That's it. Oh, right out of the bag, Chubby. There they are. Oh, lovely. Red, black. No, you don't have to bite your wings, Chubby. No, they don't, actually. No, not at all. No, it's not surprising. Children don't need wings. No, they really don't. Come on, right out of the bag, then. Let's get you right out of the bag. There we are. You can sit on my lap. That's it. Look, Chubby, will you stop the... Don't do Chubby, stop that. Sit on your tail, that's better. Well, this is Chubby. Now, first thing, can you guess why he's called Chubby? Oh, I ought to tell you, it's not because he's fat. I'm not calling you fat, Chubby. No, I'm not. Though you do have a round tummy. But uh, in dragon language, Chubby means fierce flame. Well, here's Chubby, and this is his story. Chubby used to live in a castle. It was one of those big castles you see in storybooks and on films. It had turrets and it had towers and battlements and funny pointed windows. And there was a tall tower. And what's that? Oh, a wizard lived in the tower. And were there, were there knights in armour? Oh, there were lots of knights in armour on the battlements. And oh, there was a king with a crown. And a queen with a crown. And... Oh, and there were lots of princesses and princes as well. And they all lived together in the castle. And Chubby, he was the castle dragon. And very proud of himself he was. But he spent most of his time in a room underneath the king's throne room. It was a room that was always full of books. And I bet you know what we call a room that's full of books. That's right, Chubby. It's called a library. Chubby was a library dragon. And there he read all his favourite books. Now... I wonder what a dragon would like to read about. I suspect a dragon would like to read about other dragons. Is that true? Uh, or maybe, do you like to read about knights in armour? But is that your favourite book? Now, books about knights in armour, that's not your favourite. I see. His favourite book was a book about hot, burning, red volcanoes. Now, one day when Chubby was sitting there reading his favourite book, all of a sudden he got an itch in his throat and a tickle in his nose and he sneezed. Ah, no, you do not sneeze. It's very important that you don't sneeze germs on people. Well, no, not now. But Chubby did sneeze that day. 
And unfortunately, when a dragon sneezes, he might sneeze fire, which is really bad. And this is what he did to his book. Look at that. Now it just says it's called, let's see, it says, now it says it's called the Big Red Hot. He spoke the word volcano. Oh, Chubby, you've burnt your book all the way through. That's not how to treat a book. Well, Chubby was very sad about his book. And he thought, oh dear, I've got a cold. And a dragon with a cold is not a good idea. And he thought, I know, I'll go and see the wizard and the wizard will make me better. So he spread his, uh, he, he jumped up and spread his wings and he began to climb the spiral staircase. But dragons live a long time, as I expect you know from storybooks. And he'd been in the library a very long time. And when he went out into the castle, he'd been down in the library so long <gasps> that the castle had fallen down. And it was now just tumbled walls all covered in ivy. And there was no tower. And the wizard had gone away. And there were no knights in armour, and there no king, no queen, no princes and princesses. They'd all gone away. Oh, Chubby. He was very sad and he thought, I'd better go and buy it, find a new castle. So he did something else he hadn't done for ages. He spread his wings and he began to fly. And he flew over the castle and then over the hills and over the rivers. And he looked down and thought, there's a castle! landed plonk. Now there were lots of people at the castle uh, but they didn't have crowns and they didn't have armour and they certainly weren't wizards but they all had cameras so pretend you've got a camera and take a picture of the old tower. Click. Take a picture of the funny shaped window. Click. Take a picture of the spiral staircase. Click. Take a picture of the dungeon. Click. Take a picture of the dragon. Click. <gasps> said all the people and they ran away. I know you wouldn't have run away, but they all ran away, leaving Chubby all by himself. I only wanted to find out where to get, find a new wizard, he said. We'll have to have a think. So he had a think. Mm. 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 Oh, I know, said Chubby. And he thought, I'll go and find a library. That's a place where people can tell you almost anything and there's lots of books. I'll go and find a library. So off he went and he flew over the hills and over the mountains and over the rivers until he saw a town down below and he went, there's a library! Blunk! And he stuck his head through the door. Now I think library ladies must be very brave because although her knees were knocking and her teeth were chattering, the library lady said, can I help you? Oh yes, said Chubby, can you tell me how to find a wizard? A wizard, said the library lady. Why do you want to find a wizard? I need a wizard to make my cold better, said Chubby. Mm, said the library lady. Most people go to the doctor or perhaps to the pharmacy, to the chemist, to get some medicine. Uh, I don't think many people go and find wizards nowadays. How do I find a chemist or a pharmacy or whatever you called it, said Chubby? Ah, said the lady. And she showed Chubby a green cross. You need to look for a shop with something like this outside it. Same colour as your eyes. So Chubby flew over the town until he saw a chemist shop and he landed plonk and stuck his head through the door. Now I think chemists must be quite brave too because the chemist didn't run away either. He just said, can I help you? Yes, said Chubby. Can you make my cold better? Well, said the chemist, colds get better on their own but I might be able to give you some medicine to help you feel better. Will it stop me sneezing, said Chubby. Not for a few days, said the chemist. That's no good, said Chubby. I keep burning my books. Ah, said the chemist. What you need then is much more important. You need something to keep your sneezes from getting out. Most people use tissues. And he handed Chubby a paper tissue. Just then was itching his nose and a tickle in his throat and he sneezed. Achoo! Wipe your nose, Chubby. Now we have to throw this away now. But oh, just one problem. That's not going to work because he burnt it all the way through. That's really not going to work, Chubby. Well, the chemist said, I could give you something stronger. You see, people used to use handkerchiefs made out of cloth. And those are much stronger, but be very careful. They have to be properly washed if you're going to use them again. 
So Chubby gave Chubby a cloth handkerchief. All of a sudden, the itch in his nose and a tickle in his throat and he sneezed, achoo! Blech. Now be very careful how you open this Chubby because you don't want the germs to spread around. We really should put that straight in the bin or, oh, well, it's not going to work anyway. Look at that, he's burnt right the way through his handkerchief. That's no good, said Chubby. It's not strong enough for dragon sneeze. We need something stronger. Remember, I'm a dragon. We're going to have to think about this, said the chemist. So they had a think. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, oh yes, said the chemist, I know. And he went to the back of the shop where there was a big cylinder painted red. It's a fire extinguisher. But next to it was a red box. And he took something out of the red box. This is special, he said. It's called a fire blanket. You can put this over little fires and it'll put the fire out. They're very useful. I think it might even be strong enough for a dragon sneeze. Just then there was an itch in his throat and a tickle in his nose and he sneezed. Ah, Blow your nose. Blah, that's it. Really blow it. <laughs> that's better. Oh. That seems to have worked. There's not a hole in it anywhere. Well, once Chubby had got his special handkerchief, his dragon handkerchief, he then didn't have to go back to his library and he can now take it round so that if he does sneeze any time, he can put it over his nose and he won't spread his sneezes, which is very sensible because nobody wants a dragon cold. Well, now he's so excited not to go back to his uh, castle and he loves going to libraries and all sorts of schools and places and meeting children. And I hope one day he'll come and see you too. So Chubby, do you think you could say goodbye? That's it. And uh, yes, oh yes, there's some Chubby stories for you to do yourself. Make a new story about Chubby. You could try that. And there's also all sorts of lovely ideas thinking if you could, if Chubby came to visit you where you live, where would you take him to see when it's safe to go and uh, uh, enjoy going out again? So Chubby, say goodbye for now. Bye bye. And uh, maybe we'll have more stories another time. Bye, everybody, and bye-bye from Chubby.